I think we can start already. Um, I would like to welcome everybody for our today uh, scientist webinar. My name is Anesta Sarczyk. Some of them uh, may know me already. And since now on, I will be moderating the webinar session. And uh, today we have a webinar on multiple intelligence in teaching STEAM at young age, who will be held by, held by uh, uh, our uh, Scientix Deputy Ambassad Ambassadors, uh, Cornelia Melchu and Irina Vasilescu. So <laughs> they are already waving to us. Uh, we have some ways back, waving back. Very good. So I pass the floor to, uh, to Cornelia, who will open our today presentation, and then she will pass on to Irina. OK, so we can start. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. As you know, my name is Cornelia Melko. I'm an SDA ambassador from Romania. And I'm very happy I am presenting you today the four scientists webinar. Uh, for um, the, the beginning, I kindly invite you to watch a video related to multiple intelligence in school. So I will share my desktop, and uh, please uh, watch, because you cannot hear it, unfortunately. But I will use the subtitling, OK? It's normal that I don't see anything.
Okay. So, after this short video, I would like to kindly ask you to answer to a short question on an answer garden. I'll give you the link in the chat because I cannot share it with you. Okay? So I'll put the link on the chat. And please ask the question there. You only have 20 characters, I think, so be very short, please. In the meantime, let's start with a question. What does multiple intelligence theory have to do with teaching STEM? And we have a lot of answers, I think. And as uh, Judy Kenny Willis and Ostra Johnson said, it allows teachers to use eight different possible approaches to STEM learning and teaching. This multiple instruction approach results in a deeper and richer understanding of STEM concepts through multiple representation. Enables all students to learn STEM successfully and enjoyably. Allows for a variety of entry points into STEM content. Focuses on students' unique strengths, encouraging celebration of diversity, and supports creative experiment experimentation with STEM ideas. Okay, now I will share again the desktop with you because I want to see the answers you gave. But nobody submitted anything. No answers yet, okay, we can wait. Now, the next step. STEM and multiple intelligence in pre-primary and primary school. As you know, there are eight types of intelligences. Verbal linguistic, logical, mathematical, musical, naturalistic, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, and interpersonal. And because we, as a teachers, want to improve our way of teaching, want to bring back school into reality, want, want to have motivated students, and so on, we find a lot of ways of um, making our way of teaching more enjoyable. What does multiple intelligence theory bring in the classroom. If we are teaching verbal linguistic um, intelligence, we can do storytelling, book corners, humor and jokes, questions, assessment tests, letters, written or oral explanation. For the young children, I will like to share it with you a presentation I um, used in one of my projects and in my classes. Classes you have here ThinkLink, and I think you know the tool. ThinkLink is a tool who is an, in a, in an interactive picture. You can add on the picture, videos, photos, okay, and links. And that was made for teaching six-year-old students, even, and odd numbers. So even all in pairs, odd, not all, not all in pairs, okay. And I added here, even and odd numbers in reality, because, because you know, in uh, some uh, countries, in most of countries, the um, houses are uh, numbered on odd number on the uh, left and uh, even number on the right, so they can see it 
in the reality than I had it here. A Romanian song about even and odd numbers in our mother tongue, so it is related to musical intelligence too. And two rhymes, I used Voki for um, uploaded them. Um, unfortunately, you can't hear, I told you, but uh, they are very simple. For the English one, is like uh, one, three, five, seven, nine, odd numbers all the time. So it's very simple, and that helped my little students to remember easier the even and the odd numbers. You can use rhymes in your own languages because I'm pretty sure they are available in all the languages. Okay, so that was an example for the linguistic, verbal linguistic intelligence. Let's go further on then. And I'm going to show you now an example for the logical mathematical intelligence, the one with uh, strictly related with um, STEM teaching. What we have here is a case. Sorry. Okay. I um, okay. So this is um case. I'm I used zonal.com. I I don't know if you know this tool. It's a very good tool for developing thesis. And this is uh, the title TTA that was for one of my projects, Twin Bus Travel Agency. The description, the keywords, and so on. Hello, it good. We have a welcome. welcome. Yeah, this is a case which helps. You can that is for grades three, five, and pre-primary. So that means then primary. Sorry, that means eight, nine years old. It's related to STEM and art and music too. Then the introduction. We are going to travel from place to place with our TTA twin bus. We have to know how many kilometers will be our journey. Good luck. So this is the STEM problem for them. The task. You should make a travel route from the county to county using the map. I, I gave them the tip. Look at the TTA living places. You should find out the distance in kilometers from place to place. You should calculate the total distance. You should decide how many days and which mean of transport will choose the tourist. So they have four tasks to do. Then the, the process is described. The students will identify the living places of their project process on Google Maps. So they will use Google Maps to ICT. Their work, they will calculate the distance. An example, they will work in groups then five, six students. They will create a virtual tour, including partners, living places, and they choose a mean of transport. And finally, they will create a brochure, a mini travel guide, a poster, or a movie, or a PPT for promoting their tour. So that's that kind of um, art and music and linguistic intelligence evaluation. And you have here a grade for evaluating the student's work, so that is very good. I kindly invite you to use this tool because I know it works and it is, uh, it is very pleasant for the children and they like to work on it. Then the next intelligence I'm going to talk a little about, about is the musical intelligence. And why? Because music is related to mathematics, as you know, because of the reason. So what can you 
pro to provide to the students. Listening corners, rhythmical activities, background music, and as I uh, showed you on the think link, you can add some songs with lyrics related to STEM, and that will be great for them because all the young children love music. I'm sorry I can, cannot share with you sound because the sound is not, doesn't work, sorry. Uh, we are going further on now, and let's talk a little bit about the naturalistic intelligence that I think is very important nowadays because we brought the children in front of the computers, and now we have to bring them out to the classroom sometimes. And why out? Uh, and I'm um, making now. A um, how can I say? No, I kindly invite you to go out with the children from the class from, from the classroom uh, time to time from time to time because there is no classroom better than nature because outdoor we can sort classify can't observe rocks, leaves, insects, and so on. And I'm telling from my experience, and I know you know it, the children love to go outside. And they can even use their tablets or their devices as mobile phones or iPads for taking pictures or for using Google Maps on, or for even for QR codes or whatever. So we can combine it very well. The next intelligence is the bubbly kinesthetic intelligence. I prepared a short video with a dance, but because we don't have any sound and we cannot see it, but anyway, the final of the, my, my part in this presentation, I will provide links to two products so you can go there and see them. Uh, but let's remember for the public kinesthetic, kinesthetic story. Intelligence, we can use gestures, dramatization, hands-on example, physical models, dancing, and um, dancing is very good for the little children. Then, the next is uh, the intrapersonal. I think that is a little bit tricky at young ages because um, we should try to involve children in working in groups. Anyway, we, can, we have to discuss to give them visual clues like color, circles, boxes, arrows, to, we have to guide them to use the um, graphic organizer like mind maps or whatever, and to use personal journals to, and diaries to write down their thoughts and their feelings. For the um, Interpersonal intelligence, I um, said that it's very good um, to um, involve uh, children in project-based problems. They can work in groups, they can do common work and uh, make a common final product and um, a lot of uh, common um, presentations and what I have here and that uh, it is a very good um, uh, uh, example for the special intelligence too is a presentation made with uh, my students. They were age 10 when we worked on it 
that's called symmetry. It was made uh, using Google Docs, and then we upload it on SlideShare. And you can see here the line of symmetry in nature, butterflies and flowers, and symmetry, different lines of symmetry. and snowflakes. In architecture, in the water, and finally in images. And let's work. So they had to do some work too. Um, that was very good because we reused the reality and we um, designed, I designed my teaching they were based on what they knew before. Okay, I think um, I uh, uh, talked all about, uh, about all the intelligences, but what I want to share with you now, the games. This is a puzzle game. I think you know Jig Zone, but there are a lot of tools who, allow, uh, who provide uh, this kind of games and we can upload. And this is a tangram, so that's a mass stem, because they use the tangram for uh, making a dog, and then they uh, play the puzzle to make the picture again, and that's very good for logical intelligence again. Now, um, unfortunately, I can uh, see the chat now, but I'm going back to the WebEx. And, and now, I would like to ask you uh, to ask you if you have any questions before I'm going to. Uh, give you some examples. I want to give you two uh, uh, links to two of my projects. No, okay. Uh, I would just like to. I would just like to add. Sorry, uh, Cornelia, that if anyone has any questions now or in the on further, uh, you can always write uh, the question using chat uh, function. So it's easier for, uh, maybe later to check if all yeah. questions are answered. So maybe right now we can pass uh, the floor to uh, Irina if you are uh, already. Uh, done with your part. Also, or there are any questions? No, I, uh, I just want to share the screen again before Irina is starting because I will give her the, and I want to, um, oh, sorry. Okay, to give you an example of a project based on STEM and multiple intelligence, Friends Forever, that was a project who was the winner of the European Prize for the competition and on twinning for a 411 age category in 2014. And here are all the activities based on the theory of uh, multiple intelligence, all about dogs. So here we, the children, because uh, we were partners with them in this, uh, this project, they learn about dog breeds, dogs as mammals, and so on. Then. Breeds, the breeds of dogs, good that they choose some breeds so that they are good with the children and they like them. Parts of the body, all this dog, and so on. And then 
cartoons, they created cartoons using some tools, go and make yeah, don't do, and so on, and then dog rhymes, that's for, for the linguistic intelligence and the musical one, and that's it. I will provide links for you because, yeah, um, Irina needs 10 minutes and then uh, we have the feedback because I kindly ask you, I will kindly ask you to uh, put your feedback on a tablet. But uh, are you ready, Rina? Can you hear Irina? me? Okay. And so, uh, if you hear me, I can start. Uh, I think you also had a slide for me. Yes. Uh, my name is Irina Vasilescu. I'm a math teacher from Bucharest, Romania. I'm also a scientific deputy ambassador and an e-twinning ambassador. Um, I've been uh, a winner of a uh, European e-twinning prizes three times. And uh, two weeks ago, I've just uh, finished uh, moderating an e-twinning learning lab about using multiple intelligences in math. Maybe some of you have attended it, or maybe next time. And I'm going to talk to you about a project. It's a Cominius project, Cominius e-twinning project. Um, which is still a work in progress because it's in, uh, it is in its second development year and it's going to end in July. And its title is uh, Alternatives for Innovative Math Study. I'm uh, also going to share my screen with you. And uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you something about uh, the project. This is uh, the website, actually the blog of the project, but it's structured as a, web, as a website. You can see the uh, address, the, the web address here, and you are invited to take a look at it whenever you have some uh, spare time and to, to comment if you want and to like it if you want <laughs> and um, to, to use whatever you see fit, to, to the, whatever you can use uh, from, from it. As I said, it's an e-twinning project, it's an e communion for secondary school students. So our students are uh, from 12 to 16. And um, our um, um, main aim, because uh, the acronym of our uh, uh, title is AIMS, our main aim is uh, to help our students overcome the math phobia uh, that um, was uh, noticed by uh, psychologists, school psychologists uh, during the last years, especially uh, in secondary schools because uh, math becomes an exam subject and students tend to see it as a stressful and a less friendly uh, subject as they uh, uh, saw it in, in the earlier years. Um, there are uh, several, uh, actually seven uh, partner schools in this uh, project. There is a school from Greece, uh, Romania, who's the coordinator, uh, a school from Poland, a school from Netherlands, a school from France, a school from Italy, and a school from Spain. Um, and um, first of all, uh, one of the um, uh, parts of the uh, project is, uh, of course, a description of the uh, multiple intelligence theory, but also a study that we have started the project with. Uh, and you can see the results here. We have tested our students regarding their uh, uh, dominant type of intelligence. And uh, the results have been quite, quite interesting and the differences are uh, quite striking. Uh, also from, uh, from one country to another, but also from uh, uh, boys to girls. Uh, there's also um, a link to the results of the study. 
And then, of course, there are um, uh, links to, set to the, all the PDP activities related to all the intelligence types. I have to tell you that this blog will be one of the final project, products of our um, project. Uh, actually, uh, the, the um, most important product will be a didactic kit consisting of a pedagogical guide, a teacher's guide, with the descriptions of uh, the most efficient activities, um, and uh, which will be uh, online as well as printed. And also this blog that uh, summarizes the, the most efficient activities, and also it will be replicated by a DVD. The, the activities will also be on a DVD. So there are sections for each type of activity. And uh, let me show you a little bit about this. For the interpersonal activities, this was um, um, a task called a piece of pie in our towns. Uh, we proposed a common uh, pie recite that we have uh, given to our students, and they had to calculate and to compare the cost of the same uh, piece of pie in our uh, respective towns. And uh, in this way, they could find something about uh, um, our living style, styles and our, uh, um, our home environment. Of course, the students have already cooked the pie, and uh, they enjoyed eating it as well. Uh, they have uh, studied their um, students, uh, their college preferences, and made statistics out of it. Uh, they have made timelines of uh, math history. Um, and during the meeting in France, they created an online quiz that they have already played together during the meeting. They also created a buzzer that was used during the game. And it was a very involving and uh, a very nice activity. Uh, they, this is uh, the, the document with the results of the multiple intelligence test that you can see here. Uh, these were um, presentations about uh, uh, mathematicians because in the interpersonal intelligence we also wanted to show them that mathematicians were also human beings and they have their problems and their obstacles and they managed to overcome those. Uh, so they shouldn't uh, um, be discouraged by, by uh, the obstacles they meet in their way of uh, learning math, because everybody uh, have, uh, have encountered this, has encounter, encountered obstacles. Uh, the second type of uh, intelligence that we have uh, focused on was the musical, and we also said musical artistic intelligence. Uh, this is a... Um, uh, also a thing link interface, a thing link, Im thing link image. This is an advent calendar that was uh, created by one of my students. And on each day from uh, December 1st to December 24th, there is a link to a SoundCloud uh, sound file with a problem, a math problem um, recorded by one of the students. And of course, the, the partners uh, answer these uh, questions and you can see all their answers on our uh, twin space because, as I, as I already said, the blog only comprises the most important, the most relevant activities, selected activities. There is much more on the twin space that you can access from here. Uh, another uh, important part was the flipped classroom. Flip Flipped classroom, as you will probably know, it's a teaching technique that allows students to learn at home and practice at school. Uh, so we, we invited our students to create videos, video lessons for their partners. This was a common activity. As you can see, there are videos created by several countries. And after explaining something, a, a notion, a math notion or a math theorem, or a, a, a method of uh, solving some problems. Uh, students were invited to solve, to actually solve a problem using uh, what they have learned from their partners. So it was a little bit of uh, peer learning, peer teaching. Uh, also in the musical uh, activities and artistic activities, we created videos uh, regarding the important mathematicians. And also, we tried to create uh, Mondrian-style cards, Christmas cards, that 
um, were also accompanied by uh, math problems. They had to to find the smallest number of colors that can be used on such a card. And there's also uh, a link to a narrable. A narrable is a kind of a sli slideshow, but it can be an audio slideshow with uh, uh, math in art. Uh, for the verbal intelligence, this was uh, um, astoundingly. Uh, it was we were um, surprised to have this as a, one of a very uh, important part of our project because we worked a lot on it and we liked it a lot. Um, we have here. Um, no, I have to to open it here. We have here uh, a pie book. Um, I'm going to show it to you in, in a short while. Um, this was created for for uh, last year's for um, uh, Pi Day 2014, and as you see, we called it Pilish Literature because all the writings in here are, of course, original writings, and they are created following the structure of number pi. Um, most of them are bilingual. I'm going to open it again because it was uh, blocked by one of other, one other tab. Most of them are bilingual, and uh, it was first of all created online collaboratively. So we all worked on it. On it, all the teams. It was not just created by one team, but by all the teams. And then, uh, as a surprise, one of our partner teams. Uh, printed it, and now we have a printed one. As you see, the, there are uh, poems, poems we call them, not poems, but poems, that follow the structure of number pi, both in uh, English and in this case in Romanian, which was not very easy to achieve, but it was quite quite funny to do. And there are also pi pools, that is high pools, but following the, uh, the digits of pi, pi morics, and other inspirational writings. Then we created a lot of other um, tasks, activities for the uh, verbal intelligence, but one that we are very proud of is uh, a magazine. Uh, this is a magazine called Math Word Bound, and in, it includes a lot of uh, uh, literary works created by our students, and one that we liked a lot was turning graphs, function graphs, into stories. Uh, we propose graphs to our uh, to our students, and uh, each uh, each uh, team challenged the other teams to create a story starting from this graph. And they created stories related to uh, everyday life starting from these graphs. Also, there are crime stories. Also, in this uh, in this uh, magazine, there are um, also allusions from literature, mathematical ideas from lit literature, for example, from uh, Alice in, Man uh, in Wonderland, from Don Quixote, even from Dante. And as I said, there are crime stories that have uh, mathematical hints, and students use these hints, for, for example, Pedersen's theorem, to, to solve these mysteries and to find the, the suspects. Um, then uh, there are there is the visual part. Uh, we created tessellations. There is also a thing link inter uh, interface with uh, tessellations. Um, some of them were created online. Some of them were created actually by drawing. We created visual proofs using using GeoGebra. A lot of uh, theorems uh, proved proved uh, in a visual way. Puzzles, activities using the geo board, and uh, so on. Um, this is also from the visual part. It's called uh, right angles are always right. It's um, ways of constructing right angles in ancient ways, ways that we have found uh, that to have been used by the Mayans or by the Egyptians, uh, also uh, proving the um, Pelleses theorem. Um, uh, 
I'm sorry. I'm going to get back the tab that gets in my way. Okay. Uh, for the bodily kinesthetic intelligence, um, we try to uh, find practical proofs of theorems. Uh, some of them are uh, uh, the uh, proofs for uh, Pythagoras theorem, and there are a lot of practical proofs, starting from uh, using M&Ms, as you can see here, beans, uh, from cutting, cutting paper, um, origami, uh, folding paper, and so on, so on. Also, there are some other theorem, theorems um, used, uh, uh, proved also by uh, practical, practical means, not by uh, pen and paper. Um, the handshaking problem that you can see solved here. It's a famous problem. Uh, there was also an activity called uh, uh, the spacecraft race. They had to build a lunar module and uh, have some statistics on its speed and distance. There was a math origami uh, workshop, charades, and even a mathematical fair that uh, included building uh, math jewels and uh, crochet, because uh, even knitting and crochet can include mathematics. So a lot of uh, practical activities. And uh, finally, now we are still working on the logical intelligence, and we have uh, also a, a common product, which will be a, a, an encrypt, encrypted messages book. It's still on the way. Uh, we have um, given our students some information about uh, some kind of encrypting method, me methods from the transposition code to Caesar code uh, and all kinds of uh, encoding uh, languages. And then they have created uh, lang um, encrypted messages and shared them with their, uh, um, with their partners and asked them to, to solve them. And uh, the last thing that I want to, to show you, we also have a web quest, but I also uh, want to show you we have a, uh, even a smartphone app that they have built together. And I think building an app is uh, an important activity for the logical intelligence too, because it includes uh, a lot of uh, algorithmic thinking and uh, um, a lot of step-by-step um, um, -step thinking. So uh, this was about all. I'm going to share the, the link here with you. And uh, please feel free to comment. Please, please feel, feel free to follow us. Feel, please, please feel free to use whatever you like and uh, uh, share it with uh, your partners or with your students. We will be very happy to have as many visitors as possible. I, I hope you, you like the project and we're waiting to to see you visit our site. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Irina. And uh, now we uh, open uh, 15 minutes uh, question session. So if anyone has any uh, question to our uh, presenters, please uh, write it on the chart or unmute your um, microphone and ask directly to Cornelia or to Irina. I checked the chat, but uh, I don't see any questions right now. I see uh, congratulations for and admiration for the project, but uh, no question right now. I can see a question about the time. Can I answer? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, uh, as I said, it's a two years project and uh, this is our second year. So we've been already worked with uh, six other countries for um, almost a year and a half, pretty much a year and a half. And it's a lot of work. What you saw is just uh, the selected activities, but if you if you take a look at the screening space, um, uh, uh, the twin space, there's a lot of work. Actually, 
for me, every day. For the others, at least once a week with a class and after class, of course. Um, I see the other question. Uh, it's to Irina. What age are your pupils? Could you please reply on that? Yes, my pupils, uh, this year they are 12. They are beginners. But last year they were um, 13, 14. Um, actually, they were 14, eighth grade. And the other students in the project in our school, there are two other groups that are 14. And in the other schools, they are uh, even older, 14, 15, even 16. So mine are the youngest this year, only 12. It's quite hard, but, but for 14, it's perfect. 14 is a very good age for such a project. I can see another another question about how how I distribute the activities. Um, we work with three groups, and uh, as I said, in our school, the groups are different ages, so we select the activities that match the curriculum the best for our groups. And each uh, each of the three teachers involved in the project works with the whole group during the class. We have an optional class, and we work during the optional class with the whole group with the whole class. But we, we share uh, depending on what matches the curriculum because we also, we also want to help students with the curriculum, of course. Okay, thank you. And uh, I saw the other question um, before this one. Um, there is, I just need to find it. Tatiana, she asked, uh, you all this work doing the classroom, is it a part of curriculum? Maybe both of you can reply on that. Maybe first Irina, once she's already talking, and then we, I will ask Cornelia also to, to reply on that. Not, of it, not all of it is part, actually part of a curriculum, but most of it we, we try to find things related to the curriculum. And we try to, to find at least part of the activities that link directly to, to the curriculum. For example, for the coach, we can find uh, in the encryption, encryption code, we can find things of uh, functions, divisibility, and so on. So we try to connect it. It's not actually the curriculum, it's not the, the book, but connected. We try to connect it as much as possible. Okay, and uh, Cornelia, could you also say something about this from your side? You need to unmute your uh, microphone, remember, please. Hello? I'm a primary school teacher, so all the activities are integrated. Sorry? Cornelia, I think your uh, your microphone was mute, so could you please start oh. since the beginning? No problem, no problem. Just okay, okay, okay. So, as I wrote down in the chat box, mm -hmm. I integrate any of every activity and any kind of activity into the curriculum because I'm a primary school teacher. I teach everything, so that's my opportunity and I can integrate every activity into the curriculum and uh, for the preparatory class for the first for the second and for the third we have integrated curriculum so that's great so we can adapt um, the multiple intelligence theory to any subject so that this is very good okay perfect i saw the other question um, how many work yeah how many hours per week yes could you read maybe question and then a reply so everybody knows which question we're talking about right now? Cornelia, 
So as I said, um, I'm working, so I cannot say to you how many hours, because if I'm uh, teaching uh, uh, other even numbers, for example, um, this, this can be one of the activities, so one hour per week or two hours, it depends of um, um, how many hours I'm planning to do the topic. So it's different from Irina because I know the math curriculum is very heavy and is different from the primary school. Okay. And I see the question uh, from Elaine. Uh, she asked, uh, taking into account the different uh, learning uh, dispositions of students helps to create learning experience which are more uh, enriching and uh, diverse. How do you support uh, or strengthen this different intelligence to ensure that every student has an opportunity to develop all of them? That's very uh, yes, uh, long I was question. And it is a very good question because I was waiting for it. Um, if I can talk first and then Irina, if she wants yes, to, sure. to uh, answer the question. So, the main aim of this theory is not to, to develop just the intelligence that is very strong to, for a one child, you know. So they have to test, to test and to develop all of them. So I switch the um, groups because mainly they work in groups and um, every time I challenge them to do another kind of activity. But I am, um, um, I'm sure um, and I keep in my mind that in each group should be one with um, uh, st his intelligence is very strong in that point, you know. So if we are working on a math, for example, so a logic mathematical um, problem or topic, I'm doing the groups um, with one who is very good in math and logical to, to get support because they have to uh, learn from each other. So I'm not um, teaching just, you know. So I think it's, in my opinion, it's a... Uh, Wrong. It's very wrong, wrong to uh, classify them, you know, you are good in music, so don't do math, for example, and so on. And now, Irina? Uh, first of all, about the question about time, I've already answered that. They uh, work in school one hour per week, and uh, sometimes they have to work a little bit at home as well. And I uh, have them work at home in uh, in groups too, as well as in school, because one of the things I want to uh, to have the students uh, um, achieve is uh, the, the teamwork skills, because in math there's, a, there's very little teamwork. They usually work by themselves, the individual work, there's a lot of competition, there's not enough collaboration in math classes, in my opinion, especially since uh, they're expecting exams every two years every two years in, in, uh, in our country. So I want to show them that math can be collaborative, math can be a, a friendly thing, not, not a scary thing, and not an individualistic uh, uh, subject. And uh, of course they all have to do uh, all the activities uh, regardless of the uh, multiple intelligence type that they, uh, they address. So uh, little by little they discover what is their uh, their best uh, learning style, and that's also uh, something I want to achieve to have them uh, know themselves better, know how they can relate to the teaching content, to the learning content better. If they are visual learners, if they are auditive learners, and also to to observe the others and to know that the others can learn in another way, but that doesn't make them less valuable. So little by little they find they, uh, at first I, I give them roles, I uh, assign the roles, but little by little they learn that the roles in the team can be uh, assigned by themselves, they can do that themselves and they can find a, a coordinator for this task and maybe another coordinator next time and one is uh, more uh, better in, uh, in visualizing things or building things or something like this. 
Okay, I have I have another question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so because I uh, it was uh, right down on the chat box. If I test it before the children, no, because they are very little. Very little. This year I teach seven years old. They started school when we when we they were five and a half or six. So I didn't uh, test him. It was uh, not a test as we know the because there are a lot of multiple intelligences tests on the internet and on books and whatever. But um, I knew them uh, because I uh, observed them, you know, that the main evaluation method for young ages. So I didn't test them before, okay? But then, uh, you know, when I observed them, I uh, was able to say to myself, this is good in logical uh, verbal, this is good in um, um, math and so on, or so on. and uh, I was right, okay? Because you cannot, test, you cannot taste your children too valid because they are too little. I would like to say that after testing our students, we decided on the uh, multiple intelligence type to address to be addressed in our uh, meetings in our communities meetings in our countries and we all chose the um, less uh, dominant so the, the weakest intelligence type uh, for our students to be addressed in our our meeting for example for my students the the weakest uh, intelligence type was a naturalistic one so in may we're going to have a a uh, common meeting, the last, uh, the final meeting of the project, and we're going to do activities regarding the naturalistic uh, type of intelligence, which should be interesting, I hope. Okay, we are up to finish our, uh, almost uh, finishing our uh, webinar, so I strongly recommend you to, to ask any question if you still have any. Mm, we'll wait still a bit to, to check if uh, other question will occur. And um, before we are leaving, I want to thank you, everyone. Uh, I was a little bit tired because I had a very long day, but it was a pleasure for me to be with you today. And I would like to thank you, to thank Anya and Irina too. And I kindly invite you to put your feedback on the Padlet, the link I give to you in, in the chat box. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, Cornelia. Thank you, Irina. And I would like to also say thank you to our audience for uh, your time and very inspiring questions. And already today, I would like to invite you for the next webinar on 16th of April. So uh, that's all for today. Thank you for your attention and till next time. Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you. Have a nice evening. Yeah, this is a blast. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.